distracted driving. It accounts for 25% of car crashes. Music, cell phones, food, the list goes on. This is why safe driving is so important. Correct. And it's why the best agents help safe drivers get a lower rate. Oh, exactly. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, -dum, bum, 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 bum. What makes an Amana brand furnace so comfortable for your life? Simple, our lifetime unit replacement limited warranty. Introducing premium gas furnaces from Amana brand. Amana, last and last and last. The Indians are celebrating for the first time in 13 years with a win over the Falcons. The Lakers, on the other hand, are stung by the Lebanon Yellow Jackets for the fourth year in a row. Hello again, thanks for joining us on the Lake Area Chalk Talk. I'm Mike Anthony, the only TV sports show here at Lake of the Ozarks de dedicated to prep sports. First of all, let's run down the scores from the third week of the season. The Osage Indians defeating Blair Oaks by a 27 to 25 score. A very exciting game. It went down to the wire. Eldon over Hallsville, 42 to 6. It was Versailles defeating Moberly, 33 to 7. And California over Warsaw, 48 to nothing. So the standings in the Tri-County Conference. Now after the third week, Osage on top with a 3-0 record, 1-0 in the conference. The California Pimpos actually tied for the conference lead with a 1-0 mark. They are 2-1 overall. The Versailles Tigers with a 3-0 record, no games in the conference yet. Eldon, 2-1 on the year, no games in the conference. The Blair Oaks Falcons, which the Indians just beat this week, 2-1 overall, 0-1 in the conference. And Warsaw with an 0-3 record, 0-1 in the conference. Over in the Ozarks Conference, the Camdenton Lakers, they lose to Lebanon 17-14. to That'll put the Lakers right in the middle of the pack as far as the conference is concerned. Glendale and Kickapoo on top. 3-0 records, 3-0 in the conference for both of those schools. Lebanon is next with a 2-1 overall record. 2-0 in the conference. Hillcrest following at 2-1, 1-0 in the conference. And the Lakers, as we told you, in the middle of the pack. One and two overall. The times are going tough so far for Coach Jeff Shore. One and one in the conference. The Joplin Eagles, Parkview Vikings, Waynesville Tigers, all one and two overall. One and two in the conference. And Rolla and West Plains, both 0 and 3 overall. 0 and 3 in the conference. Coach Dan Henderson from School of the Osage coming up. A huge win over Blair Oaks. It's coming up next on the Lake Area Chalk Talk. What makes an Amana brand furnace so comfortable for your life? Simple, our lifetime unit replacement limited warranty. Introducing premium gas furnaces from Amana brand. Amana, last and last and last. Agents, got a surprise guest tonight. We hired a cat burglar. His sticky fingers are another reason you need to be the best. The more you learn from him, the more you can help your customers protect their stuff. This guy's a legend. How good can he be? Oh, he's good. Whoa. Ta-da! Where's my watch? <laughs> we are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum.
We clean windows. We've cleaned windows for over 20 years with experience ranging from residential to commercial. Our business is based on experience and dedication in giving all of our clients a better view of life. We clean windows low using the softest water at the lake. We clean windows high, fully insured and in a timely fashion with safety in mind. For a free estimate, call 573-434-9366. We clean windows. We give our customers a better outlook on life one window at a time. Thanks a lot, Lynn. Great job. Comfortable for your life? Simple. Our lifetime unit replacement limited warranty. Introducing premium gas furnaces from Amana brand. Amana. Last and last and last. And welcome back to the Lake Area Chalk Talk. I'm Mike Anthony. Joining us now, Coach Dan Henderson from the School of the Osage Indians. And Coach, what a week it was for the Indians. The first win since 1998 over Blair Hawks. Just your thoughts. It was a great win for our program. Uh, maybe the, you know, we've had two big wins in the last five games we played to, going back to our playoff win a year ago, which was the first in, in a while. And then uh, this this one that ranks up there is, is uh, one of the biggest wins I've been a part of here at Osage, uh, just for the fact it's been so long that, that uh, uh, an Osage team has beat Blair Oaks, but, but not many people in the Tri-County have beaten Blair Oaks. So uh, it was a big win for us, but uh, we've got new challenges ahead and, and uh, we've got to go on. Is the uh, chest puffed out a little bit and the kids walking around with a little more swagger? No, we've tried, you know, it's it's one week at a time. We, we're playing a good football team this week. and. Uh, you know we've got Versailles and, and uh, they're three and zero. Uh, and actually, if you look at any of the Massey rankings or any of the rankings, uh, we're an underdog. So uh, we'll have to play extremely well uh, just to be in the game. And and our kids know that. One of my favorite sayings is, "The bigger they are, the harder they fall." Though. Well, I, you know <laughs> I, that's a, that's a great saying. And we're we're not very big, but uh, gosh, we're we're a, we're a physical. Our kids are physical and, and will hit you and. Uh, uh, just are, are exciting to watch. With about a minute and a half left, and you knew it was uh, victory formation time, what was going through your mind? Well, it was a great win because we'd handled some adversity. You know, we uh, we actually, I don't know if we had a first down the first three and a half quarters. Uh, uh, defensively, they got up, they had athletes that come up and and, and, uh, and put it put it to, put it on us pretty good. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we've we had a, a, a block punt for a touchdown. We ran a kickoff back for a touchdown. Uh, and we had a, uh, a an interception return for a touchdown. We, we had a 21-7 lead late in the third. Uh, and uh, they, they came back and went ahead of us. And, and uh, we uh, Bodine came in and, and, uh, and threw a couple, got a couple of balls uh, to, uh, to a couple of different kids. Uh, got the last one to Jared Edwards, and, and he got in the end zone. And, uh, then we was able to get a big, uh, another big stop on a special team on the field goal. And uh, the thing that, that that was that was most pleasing to me was Dylan McNerney coming back in. Uh, he came out. Uh, he's our quarterback. He's our leader. Uh, we hadn't got a lot done. He came back in and, and probably made the two biggest plays of the game uh, after the after the touchdown. And what made him really big was was coming back from a, from some uh, adversity and and. Uh, Really proud for him in that fact. We ended up, uh, when we had to have it, we got it. And, uh, you know, our, our kids just found a way. Yeah, I was going to say, that's one of the differences, I think, this year from last year. You know, after Blair scored that touchdown to go ahead, 
you know, it could have been in the back of their heads, here we go again, or even when they were driving down near the end of the game to try to get a field goal, you know, they had to be thinking about it too. And, you know, just huge the way the Indians stepped up. Right. The, the, the way we handled it and, and uh, you know, bowled our necks and, and, and just, just kind of refused to lose. And, and uh, you know, you score that many different ways and, and, and find a way to win it. It is a big win for our kids, and, and I'm, I'm really happy for them. I'm really proud of them. Uh, but like I said, we, we've got to move on. That could be the uh, motto for the Indian, you know, put a, put a sign up above the door before they walk out, refuse to lose, and well, have them hit it on the way out. That one's been taken before, but, uh, uh, you know, our kids do play hard, and, and, and uh, the, the success they've had, I've, I've got to be honest, I, I told a group today, uh, the success they've had is, is not what they've done the last three or four weeks. It's the time they put in the last nine months, and, and uh, uh, you know, some of these, these seniors that as sophomores came in and, and started working in the off season, but uh, our off season program was uh, maybe the best I've ever been around in in, in my 24 years, and, and uh, I, I truly believe that's that's why we're in the position we're in right now. With all due respect to 2010 and beating Boonville in the playoffs, which you already talked about, would you, would it be fair to say that this game, this win over Blair Oaks, was even bigger significance wise? Well, it came at a, at, a, at a great time for us. I mean, uh, um, it, just the, the third game of the year, uh, not beating them in 12 years, uh, just a, a, a lot of things. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a big win. And, 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 and I told you the last time we talked, uh, they, they were as good a football team as I've seen them have. And, uh, and, and the things our defense did uh, uh, just was outstanding. Uh, you know, Alex Berger set a school record with six sacks the other night, uh, and and he wasn't the only one. I, I mean, just kids flying around to the football, and making plays, and and, uh, and and making plays when we needed plays. I half expected them to rush the field, rip down their goalposts, and go marching through Osage Beach with it. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> the, it it was a big win. Now, uh, on the other side of the coin, okay, it's a great win, big win, uh, big as far as Tri County is concerned. But when one looks at this game and they look at field position, the Indians were just about starting in their side of the field just about the whole game. On the 50, two or three different times. Oh, we, we, had, we had great opportunities. Uh, uh, I, I thought we missed a couple balls early that uh, were, were scoring balls that, that, that you know, we, our guys expect to make those plays and, and, and we expect them to make those plays and it just didn't happen. Uh, but, but once again, that goes back to that defense I was, I was telling you about. I mean, we, we just stuffed them. Uh, they, did, they did a great job and, and uh, uh, gave us that great field position. Yeah, we saw the uh, replay. It will be coming up here again in just a little bit of uh, Tyler Wynn blocking that punt and scoring on the touchdown. You know, have you had a more complete game than that? I mean, you already talked about the block punt for the touchdown, the interception, and the kickoff return. Yeah. Have you had a game like that where you had all them different phases coming in together? Well, you know, we talked week one after uh, Jared Edwards had two, t two uh, punt returns. He scored one in the air, scored one on the ground, and almost had one in the interception, almost had one on a kickoff. But, you know, I, you know it's a, 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 for me, who I feel like has, has seen a lot, I, I mean, I, there's some, those, that's another one of those firsts for me. I haven't been in a game like that before. Would that explain their punting Blair Oaks that night? I mean, just, I mean, hardly anything made it to the line of scrimmage. You know, was it them just trying to keep it away from Edwards? You know, I don't know. The way they line up, uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't think they punted very well. And, and you know, he blocked one. I think he got a piece or somebody got a piece of one later on. Uh, but but they're, they're punting. I, I doubt if they averaged 20 yards on a punt. So. How important was it in a game like this to break on top and be the first team to score? Well, I think it was huge. Just the, the things we did to them in the first half, I, that, they had scored points in bunches the, the first two weeks. And uh, I think we frustrated them a little bit and, uh, and then to get them down. But, you know, a great team, they came back. But uh, I think we had them frustrated. Or I know we had them frustrated. Uh, they couldn't do what they had done the previous two weeks. and, and uh, you know, we pretty well made them one-dimensional where they were going to the air, and they can throw the ball. Uh, you know, a team, they, they threw it 55 times, and, uh, uh, you know, we, we 
just was, was fortunate enough to get the win. I think a lot of people at the game the week before for Blair Hawks beating Green Valley 70-48 to 48 and the way the Osage offense can score, I think a lot of people thought it was going to be a track meet. But then in the first half, 14 punts between the two schools and not a whole lot of scoring until it seemed like the teams warmed up in the second half. Well, offensively, we you know the the last half quarter is is, is when we when we got something going. Uh, uh, you know they had some great athletes. I, you know we're fast. They they may be a little faster. They had kids that matched up with us, and, and uh, uh, you know we we struggled uh, uh, getting some things done. But uh, you know like I said, when when it came time to get things done, we got it done. I know one of the uh, websites, the Monac Sports, you know, kind of looking at this game as kind of being a toss-up with a few more people favoring Blair Oaks for it. But, you know, I think the game like this kind of legitimized Osage as being for real this year and that state ranking being real. Well, Mike's state rankings don't mean anything right now. I mean, it all. Uh, what it means is you that, that puts a big bullseye on you. And, and, and we talk about that having a – Having a target on our back, and and uh, uh, you know we're going to get everybody's best shot. That's and that's that's what we truly believe. That's uh, what we tell our kids, and and we've got to come out and be ready every every week to play. Tri County uh, front seat right now. You know Versailles is Versailles is setting down the road. Who we've got on Friday night at three and zero, oh, and they're they're saying you know that, uh, that statement probably ticks them off. Uh, you know. We're going to have to go play and and, uh, and lay the cards out and see what happens. Sounds good. Coach, we appreciate you taking uh, the time, and congrats on a big, big win. Thank you. Coach Dan Henderson from the School of the Osage Indians, a 3-0 and record right now going into the game against Versailles. The Tigers also 3-0. and It ought to be another good game between the two teams. When we return, we'll talk it over with Rick Calbert, the head coach of the Camdenton Lady Lakers softball team. Stick around. The Lake Area Chalk Talk continuing right after this. Welcome back to the Lake Area Chalk Talk. Rick Calbert, the head coach of the Camdenton Lady Lakers, now joining us on the program. And Coach, uh, it may be your first year, but you're very familiar with the team. Tell us about the team so far. Well, we're... Uh... We're, re we're very young. We graduated eight seniors last year from a team that won 18 games, and uh, we had 20. Well, we have 26 girls on the team. 13 of them are freshmen, so we're really young and, and inexperienced. Is something we've been battling. You know, we play a really tough schedule, and right now we're sitting at five and ten. Um, I told somebody today that I'm battling the three eye, the three eyes right now: inexperience, injuries, and illnesses. So we haven't. We haven't had our starting lineup out on the field well yet, and uh, kind of looking forward to that. And as these freshmen, because we start four freshmen on the varsity and a sophomore, so we're pretty young and we're trying to gain that experience. We've got um, those four freshmen, obviously, with no varsity experience. The sophomore had one game last year as a, as a varsity player, and then the one of the two juniors that we start out in the field played about ten games as a as a varsity player, so we're pretty inexperienced, and it's a learning experience for us. Had games on the road recently down in Joplin, the Capital City Tournament, and Monday in Lebanon. How they do in the uh, tournament? That's a pretty big tournament. It, it is, and, and there's a lot of really good teams in there, and uh, we went down there and we stripped, we, we didn't get a win. We, uh, we had uh, Fulton down 6-1, to one and they came back and scored six runs on us to win it in the, in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, which is one of those things I tell our kids that we just have to find our way through it and we have to see those things, those freshmen and that sophomore and that young junior, you know, with that experience, they've got to see those things before they can learn how to, uh, to overcome them. You know, if, it, if it's a situation you haven't seen, it's hard to understand how you get through those things until you've actually done it. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of potential. I'm excited about them. They're fast. They're, they're willing to learn. They work hard. They go to the right places. But when things start to kind of unravel on them a little bit, they haven't seen those things. They don't know how to quite come over those obstacles yet. It's hard to believe, but when you look at the calendar and the schedule, the season's already pretty much at the midway point. Is the team where you would like it to be right now? Oh, I don't think you're ever where you want to be. I mean, you know, I wish that we had more practices. I wish we had more time. But, you know, we, we get out there and we work hard, and uh, we worked hard over the summer. We used our 25 contact days, we played some games, and you know we did what we could over the summer to prepare them, but nothing prepares you like the actual games themselves, you know, and then 
when you start going like we had, uh, we had uh, six games in eight days. It's it's you know there's not a lot of time to try to fix things that are that need to be fixed. And like I say, you know we we lost our right fielder right off the bat for to a concussion for the first six or eight games, and we lost our senior captain and and you know our leading hitter and RBI person for a week and a half with an ankle injury. She's our catcher, um, and then uh, we our uh, starting pitcher on the varsity is hurt now and our and our number two pitcher is hurt so we're kind of you know we're kind of trying to band-aid things right now to to get to where everybody's well i was going to say i'd volunteer but i don't think i'd do any good out there on the hill for you well i, I tried to pitch a little bit today and i realized now nah, i'm not too good <laughs> other than uh tolerance for maybe an extra mistake or two with a young team you know do you go into this type of a season, you know, with any differences as far as how you attack the game, or is it still the regular no, I think, game plan? No, I think those young kids need, you know, they, they need to go work their way through these things. And, and I called my two leadoff hitters, my one and two hitter over today, and talked to them in the dugout for a while. And I, they're both freshmen. I said 90% of, of the schools in the state aren't starting a freshman first and second in the batting order. You know, I said, but, but we are. And, my expectations are high for you, and every game they just get higher. And uh, I think you can do it. And I think you'll get there. Uh, but yeah, you know, you have to you have to be willing to accept those mistakes. You know, when you start four freshmen and a sophomore, you you've got to understand that, that there's going to be times that you know you're going to wonder what's going on, and then they're and then at some point they're going to reward you for all the patience and the hard work. I was going to say a couple of years from now too. That's going to look real good, and that should add to a lot of confidence. Yeah, they're going to, and it's like I told them, they're going to see everything there is to see, and, and they're both going to be extremely good. We've got a, uh, another freshman hitting in the five spot, we've got a freshman first baseman, and, you know, they're going to they're going to work their way through it. We've got a sophomore over there at, at uh, second, and we've got a couple of really good seniors, Stevie Down over third, and Nikki Jeffries behind the plate, and, and they're, going to, they're going to lead them, and we're going to just get better and better and better. But I don't think you ever lower your expectations. I think you, every time you step out on that field, you want your kids to play the utmost of their ability. You want them to have some fun, and doggone it, you want to win. I was going to say, I know you kind of already uh, blew my next question out of the water. Usually a high school team will have one pitcher that's pretty much the ace of the year, can go out there day in, day out, strike out 10 or 15 in a game. But as far as you're concerned now with the top two injured, where do you go? Well, we, we had a great committee. <laughs> We had a girl pitching today in practice that hasn't pitched since the summer. So you know, if our if if Jess Schultz, she's our junior pitcher, if she's not ready to go, um, I guess we fall to her. You know, this this uh, young girl's a freshman, hasn't pitched all year, uh, pitched a little bit over the summer. But you know, it's like I told the kids today at the end of practice. Hey, we're we're beat up a little bit. We got some injuries. We got some illnesses, and but anybody gonna feel sorry for you? And we're not and we're not gonna stop and say, hey, let's not play this one. I mean. You're going to keep going, and uh, you'll get better. And that's what I told them: is that we just work hard, and we get better every single practice, every single game. Yeah, I was going to say I can't see too many uh, sympathy wishes coming to you from the Ozark Conference. No, and and we're not looking for them. You know, uh, we're going to get in there and battle, and uh, we're just going to get better and better. I, I've got all the confidence in the world in them. I tell them all the time: I just love them to death. They work hard, they do the right things, and they're great kids. And I just love being their coach, and I enjoy each practice, and. Um, while we li while we're living through those mistakes and, and staying positive about it and, and working to have fun and try to get those wins, I, I wouldn't trade them for anything. Usually, you ask a coach the uh, next question, and a lot of times you will get some very vague and in general answers. Yeah, you know, I might get the same question to you too. You know, as far as you're concerned, other than you know making a lot of noise in the district, maybe making the playoffs. You know, what would you consider to be a good season? Oh, I think I think we're already, while the record doesn't show it, I think we're already having a good season because we've got those young kids learning, working hard, and doing the right things, playing the fundamentals. But yeah, we want to improve until, because we've got two seniors that have really worked hard for four years, and they want to go out making as much noise as they can. So until you win that last game and walk off the field as a winner of your very last game you played, you know, to me as a coach, that's where I want to be. I want to win that last game of the year, walk off the field with that last win, and uh, be state champ. I mean, that's that's the thing that I've always wanted. That's the goal I have in my, you know, my coaching career. Um, when I was.
previously when I was at another school, we made it the, the final eight and lost a, a game that would have sent us to the final four, two to one, and it's still one of the things that haunts me, and I want to get back there. And I think we have the talent to uh, maybe not this year, but eventually do that. I was going to say, I imagine being over in Camden, where they have a lot of high expectations for all the sports. You know, that's one where you know maybe you feel a little bit of pressure to get to that level. Oh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Whitney comes and talks to us all the time, and you know, he says he wants us to to do the right things and, and, to, and to make sure our kids are having fun and, and doing the fundamentals and working hard and he says and the rest will take care of itself and, and that's true and yes you know with coach Bob Shore there you know and Ann Goshen did it in the volleyball program and coach Vest did it before me in the softball program when I was their assistant you know they've won a lot of games and done a lot of good things and you put I think you put that pressure on yourself you know just being a Laker and seeing what coach Shore has done and seeing what some of the other coaches have done you know coach Hunter, I helped him with uh, soccer in the in the, uh, in the spring, and, and we won our first district. You know, and it is there, it's a winning tradition there, and you want to carry it on because the school gives you everything to be successful. We got one of the nicest softball fields in the state, and uh, you know, it's just a, a, an environment that's conducive to winning. Good luck the rest of the season, and hopefully we'll try to get you back on again. Okay, well, thank you very much. Coach Rick Calvert from the Camdenton Lakers, the Lady Lakers softball team. We wish them luck for the rest of the season. When we return, we'll wrap it up on the Lake Area Chalk Talk right after this. Catch up the latest from Elvin, School of the Osage, and Camington, only on Chalk Talk, from Wednesdays through Friday on Lake TV. And back on the Lake Area Chalk Talk, just a couple minutes remaining in the program. First of all, thank you to Coach Dan Henderson from the Osage Indian football team and Rick Calvert from the Camdenton Lady Lakers softball team. Coming up next week, we'll have Jeff Shore from the Camdenton Lakers. As they are, they are taking on Hillcrest, we'll also have Scott Blackshire, the head coach of the Osage tennis team. Quickly, let's go to the schedules for this Friday night's football games. First of all, in the Tri-County Conference, Osage will be on the road. They will take on the Versailles Tigers in a battle of unbeatens. Eldon with the 2-1 record at El Dorado Springs. They are 2-1 as well. Blair Oaks against Warsaw. Blair Oaks trying to respond after getting beat by Osage. They have a 2-1 mark. Warsaw, on the other hand, they are 0-3 on the year, 0-1 in the conference. And then Montgomery County will take a 2-1 record on the road to take on the California Pintos. The Pintos right now tied with the Indians for the Tri-County Conference lead. Over in the Ozark Conference, the Camdenton Lakers, they will be on the road taking on Doral Green and the Hillcrest Hornets. That'll be a good game there. Kickapoo will be at Glendale, Waynesville at Lebanon, Parkview at Joplin and West Plains at Rala. That is a look at all the action. We hope you enjoyed the program. Don't forget to thank the sponsors as you uh, go in and see them. You know, tell them you, know, you saw it on Channel 32, Lake Area Chalk Talk, because without their support, this program is not possible. That'll do it. I'm Mike Anthony. You have a wonderful week. Talk to you next week. Quick boat car in Osage Beach. Wash Detail Lube. And now, Mobile Boat Detail. Distracted driving. It accounts for 25% of car crashes. Music, cell phones, food, the list goes on. This is why safe driving is so important. Correct. And it's why the best agents help safe drivers get a lower rate. Oh, exactly. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Catch up the latest from Eldon, School of the Osage, and Camington, only on Chalk Talk. Wednesdays through Friday on Lake TV.